Do I still do I still have it? I don't. Not something I sold, is it? Here we go. Is it one of those items that I sold to uh buddy here? Please tell me it is. don't have it. Well, that's actually kind of unfortunate. <laughs> that's very unfortunate. Do 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 do. Boop, boop. Maybe I'll be able to do that later. If maybe like if when you get back to uh uh Dresden. Maybe I had sold it to It was a good idea might have to introduce you to high society at this reception. We're a subject of gossip and gossip among the guests. I heard them whispering about how we showed up together. You look stunning in your new outfit as usual. Covers her mouth with her hand as she gives an elegant little laugh. I certainly don't go out of wearing the same dress at last as last time, could I? I I would have bored you. Moreover, I would have bored myself. Uh, all rise. The proceedings will now begin with the d dispension of a false justice. I, Shamir, the Art of the Dream, will perform the duties of uh, judge. The rights of prosecution will be granted to anyone acquainted with rage and hatred on the part of the defender. Uh, will be given to uh, will be given to time and blind fate. All the participants are obliged to show due dread and obedience to the decisions of the court. Now, our first case is brought by the assassin Dogward against the body uh, bodyguard for hire Catrold. A Dogward accused 
and accuses Catrol of being exceedingly nimble and dexterous. Uh, this excessive dexterity enabled the defender, the defendant, to foil three assassination attempts against his employer, thus preventing the plaintiff from uh, fulfilling his contract. Alexia is more interested in having con in having a conversation than in watching the sham trial. You know what? He knows he. After our last visit to the Battle Bliss, I've been thinking a lot about the customs of Galarian. Despite our differences, we actually have a lot in common. Our actions and desires stem from the same passions, except when it comes to... Alexia's eyes widen with excitement and she utters a word that is as foreign to the abyss as you are. The love. It is common knowledge that demons know nothing about love, so why don't you explain it? Do you still uh, whisper the inheritor? Do you still believe Alexia is dangerous? No more than ever. Take a look at this place. She brought you here to witness the, this mockery of justice, to watch this genian, a genuine insult to truth and fairness. She is either trying to provoke you to violence or make you one of her obedient puppets. It is a pure and uplifting feeling in your soul that cleanses your heart of all burdens and pain. Alexia stares at you with wide eyes as she repeats your words. Pure and uplifting feeling. How intriguing and how unfamiliar. Our passions are tempestuous uh, and our feelings stem from the darkest depth of our souls. But you, you say this feeling is pure. Fascinating. Uh, growling with rage, Catchwell the bodyguard has uh, his head chopped off with a giant axe for her being too good at his job. <laughs> what? <laughs> the crowd roars its approval and the beaming plaintiff counts his coins. This is a perversion of justice. They're making a mockery of the very idea of a fair and noble trial. They enjoy ridicu ridiculing the law. Is it not true that love restricts freedom and that its, its harsh constraints can sometimes lead to cruel, evil deeds? Does not love force people to act contrary to their desires and subordinate them to the object of their affection? Do not even the most loving souls feel occasional regret about trading away their freedom for love? Haven't the most terrible betrayals been committed for the sake of love? Doesn't unrequited love cause mortals to commit suicide? And isn't rejection the reason they often resort to violence and other terrible crimes? I am most curious to hear your answer to these questions. No, these things are caused by lust and dark desire, not true love. Do you believe that real love is pure and leads only to pure deeds? If that is true, I can't help but wonder, what happens to a demon who encounters true love? Will her love darken, or darken and die, or will the demon rise above herself? The executioner has the audience in an uproar. The demons howl their approval, and Shamir has to raise her voice to be heard above the noise. Next, we'll hear the case of Varsa, the n nose cutter. He attacked two of Lucianir's vid visitors from another plane, even though the Great Nocticula made it clear that they were under her protection. Varsa, the nose cutter, tracked down his victims in the upper city and killed them with his glaive. And then he robbed them and cut off their tongues and noses. Uh, this, this scrawny demon doesn't look like a hardened killer. He writhes in his shackles, yelling hysterically, but I am not about Arsa the Nose Cutter. I don't even know who that is. My name is Sharzal, and I've never been to the Upper City. I'm not allowed to enter, even though that's where a slaver of my status should live. Besides, I've never held a glaive in my life. And this is all Hepsamira's fault. She wanted to buy my slaves and, at half price, and I refused to sell, and now she's taking revenge against me and plans to get her hands on my slaves. It seems to me that love is like a living creature. Sometimes it behaves one way, and at other times another way. It is contradictory and inconsistent. It, it leads to both good and bad encounters. And, like every living creature, it is bound to die eventually. After all, 
Every love, no matter how strong, is doomed to die. Is that not so? Ember nods seriously. That is true. Love always ends. It either ceases to be love or is lost altogether when the one we love dies. That is why we mortals value love so much. We know that we'll, it will be over before we are ready. That isn't true. We value it for the oh, we value it for the moments of true happiness when we when you are with the people you love. You can laugh and drink and joke and tell silly stories, and you feel like it will last forever. Because when love is with us, death ceases to exist. Of course, you are right. Oh, what you say is so nice, and it is so true. Love does help us feel less afraid of death. It can even make us feel immortal. Huh. I'm actually kind of getting scared right now that I might end up shifting into neutral good. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't like these level options. Ah, lo true love lives forever. Only undoubtedly, but you can see how desperately she wants to believe you. Don't lie to me. I need you to be honest. Do you truly believe that? Ah, uh, don't answer. I can see that you're being sincere. Uh, Shamir shouts to be heard above the screams of Vars the Nose Cutter. Uh, the court finds the evidence of the indi uh, indicated person's innocence to be quite convincing. However, false justice requires every sin be punished. So, therefore, I hereby declare that this demon is Vars the Nose Cutter and he shall be executed without further delay. Ugh. Shamir throws a conspiratorial glance at Hepsamira, who stands nearby. The latter grins and bows mockingly. Shamira announces loudly. And the last crime for the day is the most harmful and treacherous. Listen to Shamir attentively. The crime. The crime of sinful mercy. And the offense was further aggravated by an attempt at self-sacrifice. Uh, the mortal who stands before you is a descendant of Sherzal, a slave trader who died recently. A week ago, this tiefling was offered to the offered the chance to be an accomplice accomplice in the murder of his pro, uh, pro, uh, progenitor Sharzal in exchange for a portion of Sharzal's slaving hold. However, this mortal refused to participate in such a cunning, highly profitable murder, driven by some insane familial sentiment and a disgusting display of fondness. He warned Sharjal about the possible attempt on his life and personally hired a control, one of the best bodyguards in Alushinira, to guard his brother's life. There's more. During the last attempt on Sharjal's on life, this mortal, driven by the most disgusting feelings of duty and gratitude for his own existence, tried to cover his father with his own body to save him from the assassin's dagger. We find such actions to be criminally insane and dangerous. Therefore, false justice demands that we sentence this mortal to death. Uh, this hurts so much. Charzal's property will be declared destitute of an heir and henceforth accessible to anyone who wishes to take possession of it. Uh, uh, Vexalia smiles at you, her eyes sparkling with excitement. She seems uninterested in the drama that just played out before your eyes. Thank you for our conversation. I expected to find it interesting, but I had no idea that a discussion would be so thought-provoking. I am so glad I decided to come here with you, and I sincerely, I sincerely hope that you'll visit me again. I hope to see you at my manor soon.
I host small receptions for the most interesting and noteworthy residents of the Upper City. Conversations at these receptions are always entertaining. If you were to attend, we could continue our discussion about love. Of course, I seriously doubt my guests would be as interested in this topic as I am, so perhaps we should finish our conversation in private. Hope to see you soon. Hey, don't stay away too long. I'm looking forward to your next visit. Vile uh, Vilexia gives you a dazzling smile, then vanishes into thin air. That is horrendous. After she notices you, Shamir gives you a displeased frown and nervously asks, You again? Have you no friends that you must keep coming here to chat with me? Or perhaps, although I find this extremely hard to believe, you are not completely useless and have something of interest for me. I've completed your task. Shamir ignores you, looking somewhere else, but in your mind you hear her angry her angry hiss. So speak if you if you have, but use your mind instead of your flapping lips. Your mind. I know that you have done much to win Shamir's favor, but my heart tells me that helping her would lead to evil. Uh, forget everything I've told you. We'll find another way to complete our mission. It is wrong to fight evil by increasing the power of another evil. Reject the promises of the ardent dream and we'll leave this place before we betray ourselves and our... Uh, and betray ourselves and our ideals. to win Shamir's favor, but my heart tells me that helping her would lead to evil. Forget everything I told you. We'll find another way to complete our mission. It is wrong to fight evil by increasing the power of another evil. Reject the promises of the other dream and we'll leave this place before we betray ourselves. Can't break me. Uh. Uh. And suddenly, heaps of sides vanished. Like, hold on. Trying it won't work. This might be one of those situations where, um, <clears throat> maybe a buff that boosts will save. I'm 
I'm gonna need this back for a moment, buddy. Um... Oh god, my mutagen! <laughs> That'll do it. Hold on. Oh, it's just a straight will check? back there when I... Welcome! <laughs> mm. You know, I'm gonna deal with her later. Let's go talk with the... Uh, not Picula. Or, no, Valexia. <laughs> Normally, my will is actually at eight because the mutagen, it's at six.
The sound of Jerebus agitated chill, uh, chattering fills your ears. I don't know how adept you are at reading the emotions of others, so I must warn you, you are in danger. What are you doing here? I am enjoying the benefits of my newfound friendship with Vilexia. I have become her servant and companion, and she has given me all the protection and privileges afforded to her inner circle. She loves original and innovative forms of entertainment, and I know how good I am at entertaining demons. Aren't you afraid of Baphomet's revenge? Baphomet won't quarrel with one of Nocticula's best friends just to get uh, revenge on an insignificant worm like myself. While the lesser servants of all three demon lords are cons constantly embroiled in conflict, always trying to entrap one another in webs of intrigue, the powerful and influential demons prefer to stay neutral. The time for their conflict has not yet come. Why am I in danger? Alexia's greatest <coughs> enemy is her own boredom, and has bested her and it has bested her once again. My lady grows tired of you, and your company no longer gives her as much joy as it did before. You have ceased to surprise her, and she now finds you tedious and dull. If you wish to keep her interest, you need to stop acting so predictably. Uh, try to keep her puzzled and intrigued by your behavior. If you follow my advice, you may stand a chance of leaving the rapture. Uh, rapture of rupture with your mind and body unharmed. Tell me about Valexia. She is a magnificent creature, but she has always been afflicted by a terrible condition. She is consumed by boredom. Her entire life is an endless agony, and each day her torment grows worse. Her efforts to elude this terrible uh, condition are always short-lived and unsuccessful. If Alexia has not beset, was not beset by such insatiable curiosity. And if her moods are, and taste did not change so quickly, she could have been even more powerful than she is now. It is possible if Alexia could have been a worthy rival of the Nocticula several millennia ago. He might even have claimed to the throne that, in all, that now belongs to Our Lady in Shadow. Of course, it is also possible that after three days in power, she might have found her new status as a demon lord to be excruciatingly boring and no longer desires. Have to go. Of course, you don't want to keep Alexia waiting. She hates and feeling neglected. <clears throat> well, Alexia's demeanor has changed since the last time you saw her. She looks at you with a mixture of boredom and irritation. When she greets you, her friendliness no longer seems genuine, but forced and insincere. Here is our long-awaited guest. The performance is about to begin, and there is so much new talent here today. I wonder if any of them will entertain me. So what entertainment? And who knows what will happen between us tonight? Uh, the demon glares at you indign indign indignantly. I hope you are not suggesting anything proper. I'm not sure what you are trying to insult, but I would advise you not to be insolent with me. Dude, he's like rocking it. Alexia claps her hands and uh, hands imper imperiously, and one of the performers begin to sing a heartfelt ballad in a deep, velvety voice. Alexia looks tired, and her eyes are full of sadness. There is a wistful note on her nose, on her voice, as she asks, "Tell me, how did you end up here in the abyss? You are not one of us. Our ways are foreign to you. Why did you come to our world? What do you think is going on?" This is the finale. The performance is about to end. As I've already told you, Valexia's temper is volatile, and now you can see the proof of my word. Uh, she has grown tired of her new Galarian companion and will unleash her anger upon you at any moment. If you can surprise her, you might buy yourself some time. Otherwise, you should be, pre be prepared for a fight. We are now in this wild creature's lair, and our enemies have us cornered. Chaotic? I'm here because I wanted to. Slightly annoyed, you know? Your lightheartedness and carefree attitude were so charming until you began to bore me with your uh, superficiality. 
and Billy claps her hands. The singer quails beneath her imperious gaze and hurries away. Tiefling steps onto the stage next, uh, dressed as a jester. 